she got already. had a plan. thought I had a good plan. And then dad's got to go muddy it up with just amazing insight. Let's take a look. Actually, before we take a look, if you're new to the channel, maybe this is your first video or some of the first few, you might not know, but last September, during harvest, we had a field fire. My header, my uh, Macdon FD-135 header, had a bearing fail at the front canvas, and it got hot, and it started the header on fire, and that also started a field fire. There's a video of it on my channel. Hopefully I remember to put it here, there, there, I, I, I don't know. We've always carried some water on the combines. Usually there's at least two jugs, like uh, we got these 20 liter jugs. Usually at least two of those on each combine. There's also a fire extinguisher on everything. We kind of said, well, you know, if we, if we can't get it under control enough, usually we just, we'll do a couple laps of it with the disc. We had two days all last year where we didn't have the disc in the field. And that was obviously one of the days. So my thought was, hey, let's make a firefighting kit for this guy. Hmm, I'm thinking a rear mount might be pretty good. You get looking in here and, yeah, not a lot of good stuff to bolt onto. Like I might be able to bolt onto that. Nothing good on the bottom, and like, it's going to have to sit there. Yeah, I, I don't know about that. And so I have a a flat 500 liter tote. I was thinking it would fit there. And then, thinking, oh, maybe even that flat, we might be able to get it in here and turn sideways. So that's an option. Here's an option I like, too, is putting a, a skinny 500 in here just build a little platform also intriguing so i'm here just measuring everything up dad goes yeah what you up to P putting a firefighting kit on there oh well maybe why don't we just make a skid and you can put it on my uh my service truck and i said well I like to have the idea of having the water like in the field at all times. And he goes, that, that's a good point. Um, you know, and the odds that the grain cart is close by is almost a certainty. But he goes, well, what if, what if we were to say something shifted and we lost control of fire? Then we have, not normally this tractor, the Delta track, you know, half a million dollar tractor, and the grain cart get cooked. And grain cart's only, I don't know, $60,000. I said, well, that's not very appealing. Now, there's a catch-22 here, is that we're, we're trading a little bit of response time for a lot of speed and flexibility later. And keep in mind, I still might do something on that just in case. Whether it's even just mounting, I, I don't know. Maybe I, I do something, just a small one on that. 
Maybe I make an electric pump. I, I don't know right now. So we've got exactly seven feet. Well, seven feet and a quarter inch there. And come on. Uh, six feet in there. Now, this is a 3500 HD, I believe. Or whatever, they're all probably the same 3500. Dad's got a big honking slip tank. I think this one's like 1200 liters. But he's got duels. He's got a flat deck. And usually we have our deaf tote, um, a 500 liter tote, skinny tote, butted up here. So like, what's another thousand pounds really? Well, this is about as good as it's gonna get today. And I'm kinda, kinda getting to the point where I'm, I'm liking where it's going. So I've got a hose reel, it's a, a one inch fuel hose reel, it's going to mount here and it's got like, can't remember if I ordered 33 or I think I ordered 50 feet and a little fire nozzle for the end of it. My spool showed up yesterday and it is considerably heavier than I expected it to be, which Probably a good thing. Let's get her opened up. I stand a 0% chance of lifting this out with one hand. Now, there it is. That I didn't want at all, to be honest, because over here, I get the arctic ones. Otherwise, all they do is they just keep clicking. Below about minus 23 seems to be the sweet spot there. Or not sweet, but the critical point. Got a few things figured out. Um, a few things missing. Not... Not out of the package, just I know for a fact I had them laid out. I had it laid out here. Might have migrated into that pail over there. I'm not sure. I had a, a cam lock and whatever else. I did find a chunk of hose I didn't find earlier. I thought I had more of that though, so I probably still need to get some more. But we'll try and utilize all the fittings we can. The other thing is we're going to have to make sure that this guy sure looks like it should. Fits on there. Just make sure they're... Yep. Good. And then we're going to get do some measuring. We're going to have to mount stuff straddling the pallet. So just kind of measure stuff out, mark it out. Uh, that's about it, hopefully. Just need to, well, fill her up and do a leak test. And, well, function test. And I'm not thrilled with how the toad is sitting. Like, it, it can wiggle around just a little bit, so I might just have to make some corner brackets just to hold it in place. The last thing I'd want is it to, like, slip sideways and break that connection. So in a perfect world, what I would really like to do is to be able to leave that back valve open all the time. This guy in the on position and this guy closed. Uh, that is closed. And then ideally choke in the right spot. Maybe once we get figured out how to use it, I might even write some instructions here. The other thing I thought of kind of after the fact, and I can probably tee it in, maybe, I don't know. 
I know there's a thing you can get for injecting like a foam. I, I don't know if it's going to work or not, but. Or you can maybe even mix the foam into here. Hey, there's an idea. Anyhow, I want to be able to pretty much just rip the cord and run with the hose. Not have to worry about anything else once you're there. So when we get to function testing, this is something I'm a little concerned about is this breather. How much it can actually breathe. I might just drill a bigger hole down the middle there. Might just do that. Or a couple off to the side. Just, I don't want it to collapse upon itself. And the other thing is once we get this, I kind of thought of afterwards too, is I could use, the water at the farm here is really hard. So when we wash down equipment, it leaves some streakiness to it. I could get water from down at my uncle's or in town into here and use this as a spot free rinse. So I should plumb like a garden hose connection, like a T and something, somewhere, maybe, I don't know. But it'd be really nice for bombing around the farm just rinsing stuff down too. Uh, I may as well open this up. All right, first pull ever on this thing. Yes, I did put oil in it. Yes, there's gas in it. Eh. Oh, yeah. Choke that way, maybe? in there that's going to be a problem possibly looks pretty good now we're getting Probably 40 feet of carry there, so see if I can get her just dialed. Ooh, that's pretty good there. I don't think we're getting any more out of that, but. If I get her arch right, yeah, 35, 40 feet. This thing needs a wash anyways. She's not like, don't get me wrong, the, the two inch is way better. But we're not looking at putting out a fully engulfed combine. We're looking at a uh, small fire. Can we put it out while it's still small? Well, pretty good stream. You can always soak stuff down. Not collapsing, which is good. Where's my markings? We're at 300. I'm gonna say there was probably 525 in it when we started. Oh, there it is. Still dribbling, but. Close, close this way. So we're just shy of 14 minutes of runtime at full tilt. Honestly, I'm pretty pleased with it.
and I, I did drill out some holes on the top here earlier just because on the back side there just so it could breathe a little better tank didn't collapse at all so 500 liters in well 125 gallons roughly right uh, yeah 125 gallons roughly and we'll call it 13 and a half minutes so it's putting out eight gallons a minute roughly sound right something somewhere around there so all in this didn't really cost me a whole lot it was 300 bucks for this pump the nozzle was, I think, 15 bucks. This was around 425. Now, if I was going to do it again, I would go down to the 33 foot one. 50 feet seems excessive now that you especially see how far that launches. <laughs> I had to buy one of these and this chunk of hose. All the other fittings I had, as well as, you know, a chunk of plywood, pallet, oh, ratchet straps, probably, well, I did have them laying around, but, you know, this half tote, really, like, I'm telling you what I've already put into it, was, yeah, 300 there, four. 30 ish 425 i'm trying to remember exactly i can't remember if it was 430 plus that or if it i had figured to 430 let's just call this whole thing 450 for easy math that side that's 300 is what i spent let's say you had some more fittings than i did that's another hundred dollars of fittings so i was in it for and 10 bucks of ratchet straps all in without my time i'm talking 850 bucks and i could have like i said it's probably actually cost me less than 800 because i had some of the stuff laying around so i'm, I'm quite pleased with it gonna need a couple minor tweaks the biggest thing is going to be putting something just so this guy can't shift around at all but yeah pretty happy with it